What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another entry into our Rogue Rumble series where we take a look at maybe some underutilized or overlooked cards and see if we can make a deck out of them. So for this entry we're going to be taking a look at a Lunala GX Tapu Lele deck. So Lunala is actually a Pokemon I do think has had a lot of potential uh, ever since the early scans of it came out for Sun and Moon, but I think it's been missing a couple pieces uh, of the puzzle to make it work, so to speak. So previously, it had some challenges for it. Uh, there was not a reliable way to retreat. Dark was also extremely popular. And just, uh, again, I don't think it had enough uh, to go with it in order to make it a half-decent deck. But now, with Guardians Rising, there are some new additions that this deck can gain that actually might make it kind of decent. So let's take a look and see why I'm even going to explore this idea. So we're playing a 4-2... 3-1 split of Lunala GX and the new Lunala. So the first one we're going to be looking at is, of course, Lunala GX. So 250 hit points stage 2, which is great. Uh, two retreat costs, which previously, like I said, was a little problematic if you tried to build a deck with this. Usually you didn't have a reliable way to switch around. Uh, fighting resistance, which is, you know, it's decent, I guess. Lycanroc is kind of popular. I've seen some people playing uh, Passimian lately, so also... You know, it might be a relevant resistance, but it's okay. It's not too relevant, though. But uh, And then also dark, res or dark Weakness. So like I was saying, previously Dark has been extremely popular, but ever since Guardians Rising, Turbo Dark has kind of fallen off. Um, you know, it's popped up at a couple events, but generally speaking, it has kind of faded away. Same thing for Eveltal. People have seemed to have stopped just deciding to play it. So I think that that in and of itself kind of presents the opportunity for Lunala to creep into the metagame a little bit. But other than that, let's take a look at what this guy does. So it has this ability Psychic Transfer as often as you like during your turn before you attack. You may move a Psychic Energy from one of your Pokemon to another. So this is, you know, very similar to abilities we've seen in the past with like Aromatisse, uh, Kling Clang, my personal favorite Hydreigon. That was probably one of my favorite cards of the Black and White era. So uh, I've been itching to kind of play around with another deck kind of like that. Uh, so yeah, we can move our energy around to our different attackers. Uh, we play Max Potion in this list as well, so if one of our Pokemon gets damaged, we can move some energy around uh, Max Potion, then move all the energy back to them. So definitely a very neat ability. Um, it does have some attacks too. Usually we aren't going to be attacking with it, but I think its attacks are worth noting, uh, especially its GX move. So its first attack is going to be Moongeist Beam for what I think is honestly an overpriced 4 Psychic Energy. It does 120 and the defending Pokemon can't be healed during your next turn. So 4 for 120 is just not that good, I hate to say. I mean, you do two-shot most things and there are certain matchups where this can be handy. Uh, Sylveon is a good example. If you can manage to get 4 energy on your Lunala, uh, this can be good. That way they can't max potion. Um, same thing against Greninja, could be a decent attack against Greninja, but overall it's definitely inferior to Energy Drive on our Tapu Lele and even the attacks on the other Lunala. But then its GX move I think is a bit better. So 3 Psychic Energy and knock out one of your opponent's basic Pokemon is not a Pokemon GX. So luckily we still have a decent amount of EXs running around in the game, so that means we can, you know, Lunar Fall and you know, knock out a Shaman just instantly like that. Or, you know, let's say you're playing against Volcanium. We can knock out a benched Volcanian or, you know, any EX or, of course, non-EX. But, of course, we would prefer to take an instant knockout on an EX if possible. But definitely, a I think, a strong uh, GX move that's a little bit underrated in the game. And you can do some cute plays with this, too, where you can, like, Lysander up something that can't easily retreat. And then you can use Lunar Fall to knock out something on the bench. Uh, so a solid GX move, I do think. So then we are also playing one of the new Lunala, and I think this card actually has some good synergy with the other Lunala. 160 hit points on a uh, one prize attacker is extremely solid. May as well play at least one of these since it evolves from the same evolution line as Lunala GX. Uh, weakness, resistance, and retreat are all the same. But its first attack is Shatter Shot for one Psychic Energy. It does 40 times the number of Psychic Energy attached to this Pokemon. So very similar to the Mewtwo EX that we've seen before. 
Uh, and you know, once you get some psychic energy in play, this can actually be a pretty solid attack. Uh, but the attack I actually like more is going to be Wings of the Moon. For 3 Psychic Energy, it does 130, and you move all energy from this Pokemon to your bench Pokemon in any way that you like. So the big downfall to these energy transfer decks in the past is that if your opponent is able to knock out the Pokemon that has all of your energy, then you can't really uh, do much, you know, because the deck thrives when you have a lot of energy in play, and you're you know, easily able to switch gears and, you know, move into a different attacker and move your energy there. But like I said, if your opponent can knock out the only Pokemon that has all of your energy on, then you're in a bad spot. So Wings of the Moon is great because it allows you to attack and then send all the energy to your bench in some sort of combination to preserve your energy in play. So I actually really, really enjoy this attack. And this is actually a card I wouldn't mind considering going up to two copies of, but uh, just due to space constraints, we're just playing the one, which it it has seemed to be fine in the games that I've played with it. So next up, the main, I guess, engine slash attacker of the deck was going to be three Tapu Lele GX, uh, the new super, super hyped card from Guardians Rising. 170 hit points on a basic GX is pretty, pretty standard. Uh, one retreat cost, which is fine. No weakness, which is amazing. Um, but we're playing it for a couple reasons. It has this ability at Wonder Tag. Whenever you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may search your deck for a support card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So you guys should be plenty familiar with this. We can grab a Sycamore and Lysander, anything that we want to, uh, to play. But then we're also playing it for its attack energy drive. 20 times the number of energy on both active Pokemon. So this has a good bit of synergy with our Lunalis because we can actually move a lot of energy onto a Tapu Lele and swing for big numbers. But then it also has the attack Tapu Cure GX as well. Heal all damage from two of your bench Pokemon. So, you know, we can kind of heal our board a little bit if we decide to as well. Um, since we're playing Psychic Energy anyways, we actually will have a chance to abuse this GX move if we choose to. But yeah, so we're playing three of this just because it is a giant consistency boost, uh, which is great in the Stage 2 deck, and it has a great attack too. So that's what we're going to kind of center this deck around. Then we're also playing one Wobbuffet. It's mainly going to be for its Bide Barricade ability. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each Pokemon play hand and discard has no abilities. So this is a stage 2 deck that plays rare candy. So if we can go against like a Vileplume variant, for example, it can be a little bit problematic because they shut off our rare candies, but we can promote a Wobbuffet to turn off their abilities and gain access to our item cards yet again. But it's also good against other decks like Shaman Heavy decks like Gardevoir and Mega Rayquaza. Uh, good against potentially Greninja. Uh, if we are having a slow start, we can shut off their giant water shurikens if they, for some reason, get set up quicker than we do. Uh, but very handy ability, and it has a decent attack. Uh, since our Tapu Leles generally are going to two-shot Pokemon, sometimes you can attack with Wobbuffet to clean up a knockout. So Psychic Assault does 10, plus 10 more for every damage counter already on your opponent's active. So a decent little uh, utility Pokemon. So next up for our supporters, we are going to be playing one Bridget. Search your deck for one basic EX or three Pokemon other than EX and put them onto your bench. So this is really good because this is a setup. We want two to three Cosmogs and play ideally on turn one. Uh, we can also Bridget for a Lely potentially um, if we really want to. Um, but it's mainly going to be to ensure that we get all of our Cosmogs in play as quick as possible. So especially on turn one, now that we have access to Tapu Lele, we're only playing one of this, but we can easily search it out on the first turn of the game. So next up we have four Professor Sycamore, discard your hand and draw seven. Three in, each player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws equal to the amount of prize cards they have left. Pretty standard draw supporters you guys are probably familiar with. One Professor Kukui, draw two cards, and during this turn your, uh, your attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So it gives us a little bit of draw power and can help us clean out or clean up knockouts, especially if we go for a play where we like load up like a ton of energy on a Tapu Lele and we're still short uh, a little bit of damage to take a knockout. We can play Professor Kukui and, uh, you know, just help us clean up knockouts like I was saying. So playing one Skyla, search your deck for a trainer card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So this is a deck based around rare candy. 
So in the second turn, we can potentially throw down a Tapu Lele, uh, go for a Skyla to grab a rare candy, and evolve into our Lunalas. But also we can grab our Stadium card, our Max Potions, maybe Field Blower if we need to. So just a good card I really enjoy in the Stage 2 decks now that we have Tapu Lele. Okay, to Lysander, just to switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And one Hex Maniac until the end of your opponent's next turn. Each Pokemon hand and discard uh, has no abilities. So again, this is mainly going to be to deal with uh, item lock decks and also Greninja. Greninja can potentially be a problem for this deck. You could debatably even cut this for a promo Giratina if you choose to. Uh, but just for right now, I decided to leave it a Hex Maniac. Okay, so next up, three versus Seekers just to reuse those supporters in our deck. I am only playing three. Uh, I'm playing with my versus Seeker counts currently in certain decks just to try to adapt them to a Garbo or Heavy Meta. And, you know, just trying to be mindful of the amount of item cards that we have in the deck. So, like I said, I'm experimenting with this for right now. Three is okay. Uh, there's not too many instances where I've really felt I needed a fourth, but obviously a fourth one would be good. But like I said, it's mainly, I'm just testing out different ideas to better deal with Garbodor. For Ultra Ball, just to search our deck for any Pokemon that we want. Uh, for Rare Candy, since this is a Rare Candy based deck, we have a Stage 2 Evolution line. So let's just skip the Metal Evolution and go straight to the very top one. So obviously a card we are always happy to play here on this channel. 2 Max Potion, heal all damage from one of your Pokemon if you do discard all energy attached to that Pokemon. And normally this would be a very bad effect, but since we have our Lunala GX, we can move our energy off the Pokemon we want to heal, use Max Potion to heal all of their damage, move the energy back, and keep attacking. So definitely a great card, especially if our opponent cannot knock us out in one hit, we can definitely abuse this. Uh, two Max Elixir, look at the top six cards of your deck, attach a basic energy you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. So just one manual attachment every turn I don't think is that great. If you look back to some of these previous energy transfer decks like I've mentioned, they've all had some sort of energy acceleration. Uh, Darkrai Hydreigon previously had Dark Patch, Aromatisse had Xerneas, so just um... You know, I think we need some additional way to ensure that we have energy in play at all times. Uh, we really can't afford to miss an energy drop with this deck, I don't think. And Max Elixir is just going to help us uh, ensure that we always have, you know, just the right amount of energy. But uh, luckily, you know, we only need two energy to attack with our Tapu Leles. Uh, so that's not that's why we're not playing a huge count of the of Max Elixir. So we're just playing the two count, like I said, just to ensure that we have a steady flow. Uh, one Field Blower, so another new card from Guardians Rising. Choose two of any combination of tool cards and stadium cards and play and discard them. This is going to be mainly to deal with Garbodor, the Garbotoxin one, because if it can shut off our abilities, uh, we might be in a little bit of trouble, but it's also good we can get rid of our opponent's choice bands. That way our Pokemon can tank a little bit better. Uh, just, you know, discard whatever stadium card they might be benefiting from. So definitely a great card that came out of Guardians Rising. One Super Rod, just as a form of recovery. Shuffle three, any combination of Pokemon basic energy from your discard into your deck. So the reason I'm choosing to play this over Rescue Stretcher is just because I want the option to get energy back. Uh, just because we do play Max Elixir in this deck, that will help ensure that our Max Elixirs hit more often than not. And I believe the last item card we have is two Choice Band. The attacks of the Pokemon... Uh, this card is attached to do 30 more to your opponent's GX or EX. So definitely a good card just to amplify our damage output. You could debatably even change this to Fighting Fury Belt just because we are trying to tank hits in this deck and survive and preserve all of our energy in play. Fighting Fury Belt might have some merit in here, but um, Choice Band I think helps your Tapu Lele's hit for better numbers. It kind of always ensures that you are going to be able to two-shot your opponent. So that is the way... Or that's the reason I'm opting for Choice Band, but I think there is an argument that could be made for Fighting Fury Belt as well. 
and then the last trainer card in the list is going to be three altar of the moon this is another i think key card that came out guardians rising that really helps lunala i think actually be taken more seriously as a deck so the retreat cost of each pokemon and play that has any dark or psychic energy attached to them is two energy less and all of our pokemon in play only have a two retreat cost or lower so it essentially is going to give free retreat to whoever uh, of our pokemon has two retreat or has a psychic energy i'm sorry so definitely a great card in the list that is going to help us uh, it allows us to preserve our energy in play by not having to discard them and it allows us you know just um you know, just have an out against things like Lysander stalls and all that type of stuff. And just, you know, being able to have whoever we want in the active spot at all times. And the last of the list is going to be 11 Psychic Energy. You know, just to ensure that we always hit one when we need them. And our attackers, of course, use Psychic Energy to attack. So, guys, that is the list we are going to try out. Definitely seems like a neat deck idea. But I'm going to switch over to the battle video and show you how this looks in action. Alright, so we got ourselves a game here. So let's see what we might be playing as. Our opponent has a Chanty coin. Probably doesn't tell us too much about what we're playing, or I don't imagine we'd be playing against a Blissey deck. Uh, and we do lose the coin flip. A little bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. We'll see what happens in this game. You never know, their deck might be even slower than ours. <laughs> okay, so we actually have a pretty solid opening hand to work with. So we have two Cosmogs that we can open with. We have a Tapu Lele. Uh, we already have a couple supporters, so I don't think we even really need to search for a supporter in particular. We could potentially grab one to maybe throw away with Sycamore if we decide to go that route. But okay, so our opponent is playing. It looks like a Passimian deck. So that's interesting. Um, on paper, I don't know how I feel about this, just because luckily we aren't weak to Psychic. Um, the base Cosmogs are, but our Lunalas aren't, and neither are our Tapuleos. So here, our opponent is going to end. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure how this match will go. I, Tapu Lele doesn't seem like a great attacker against Passimians, just because you would have to have three energy on your Lele. Actually, I think four. So, yeah, that doesn't seem like a great prize trade. So we'll see how this one goes. Unfortunately, this hand is nowhere near as good as our first one. So we have to Sycamore two versus Seekers right off the bat. And, okay, so we have some options here. Um... Yeah, I think we're just going to pass. That way, next turn, we can Skyla for a rare candy and get out a Lunala. So, we're in an okay spot. Our opponent probably will take a knockout here, but, uh, you know, luckily, Lunala, when we get in play, has 250 hit points, and it's resistant to fighting, and uh, I don't think there's any way for a Passimian deck to one-shot it, so I think, I think we'll be okay. So, they are going to one-shot our little Cosmogs that are weak to Psychic. And here we actually could have gotten the the other Lunala, the new one, because it's actually a pretty decent attacker against Mew and uh, Passimian. So for one energy we could one-shot Mew, or for two we can one-shot a Passimian. But the only problem with that is once that one gets damaged, uh, we don't have a, another Lunala GX in play or anything else. So I think in the long term it might be better just to go for the Lunala GX, which is what I'm doing here. I think there's a case to be made going more aggressive, but I feel like once we get a Lunala set up and get some energy in play, um, I think we'll be okay because we have max potions. Lunala GX has a ton of hit points. So we're going to grab that guy, 250 hit points. So we can rare candy. We're going to evolve that benched one and go down another prize. But another reason I was okay with sacrificing this one is because we do have an N in hand to punish our opponent as well. So here we can just pass through. We could play the field blower, but it really doesn't do much for us since, um, you know, this Mew really isn't that much of a threat. It can't one-shot us. And if we went down to three cards, we would be at risk of a delinquent, potentially. And I don't want something like that to uh, ruin our chances here. Okay, and our opponent is going to Nest Ball grab themselves another Passimian. And yet again, I'm sure they will knock out this Cosmog. Okay, so they're going to do team play. Uh, for 200 on poor little Nebby right there. But like I said, it's okay. Our Lunology X is not weak to Psychic, so Mew will not be doing as much damage. But here we really need a Tapu Lele and an Energy, I think. Because if we get a Tapu Lele, we have enough Energy in play to where we can uh, one-shot this Mew. And we could just end and, and hope we draw into it, but I think we really need to start 
retaliating and putting on a little bit of pressure hurt me to get rid of an extra end because we've already gone through a decent amount of supporters. So I'm not too happy about that, but um, I feel like this, this will give us better odds of actually responding. So we just need an energy and we do get it, so that's good. Okay, so let's go and attach a Psychic Energy, that way we can retreat for free thanks to our Altar of the Moon, and we can use Lunala's Psychic Transfer to move the Psychic that's on it over to our Tapulele and take a knockout here. And hopefully since we put our opponent at a low hand size, uh, they won't have a DCE or a support or something like that, that would be ideal here. Okay, so we're going to take a prize, we're going to grab a Psychic Energy, not a bad card to draw I suppose. I'm just trying to think, what are we going to do next turn? We have Sycamore, but we'd have to Sycamore another Verse Seeker, we have... We could go for an N, potentially to save this Lunala and keep it in the deck. Uh, could go for a Max Potion with a Skyla. Um, so we'll have to see what our opponent does first. Okay, so they have a teammate, which is not what we want to see. Um, so no doubt they will have a double colorless energy uh, off this teammate. So at the very least that, and uh, they could grab another Pissimian to do a little bit more damage if they choose to. But either way, I don't. Again, I don't think they can actually knock out this Tapu Lele either. So I think we're going to be safe for a turn. And okay, it looks like they're going to hang on to the other cards. So I think I definitely want to end them this turn if that's the case, because that tells me that card is important. They feel like they're going to need that on the next turn. So here we're going to super odd. Let's put back a Cosmog. And okay, we've only used one rare candy, so I think we can just put the Cosmogs in and keep the Cosmoem in the discard pile. So here again, what do we go for? We could go for Skyla for a max potion. Um, so that's, I mean, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards at the moment. Oh, well, the thing is we won't even be able to take a knockout here. So that is going to be problematic. So here, hmm. This could be, okay, worst case scenario, we can use Lunala GX's GX move to take a knockout on the bench if we don't get an additional energy in play somehow. So let's see, we're gonna put down the choice band. It doesn't really make too much of a difference, but I think we just need to put it down to make sure we don't draw into it uh, if we end here. And yeah, yeah, I, I think I wanna do that. I don't wanna stick more. I wanna keep this Lunala in the deck just because it could be potentially a decent back of attacker at some point that only gives it one prize. And this hand is pretty bad. I am not gonna lie to you guys, but on the plus side, we can do kind of a cool play here. Hopefully. So we can retreat for free with this Tapu Lele. Uh, so we can retreat into our Lunala GX and we can actually use Max Elixir to get another energy in play. Cool. So we do hit the Max Elixir. The reason we had to retreat was because it only works on basic Pokemon. So we had to put the Lele on the bench in order to use that Max Elixir. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to move all this energy over to our Lunala GX. Like I've been saying, we're not really at risk of being knocked out here. So we can comfortably just kind of Moongeist Beam and... Uh, you know, put on some pressure this way. Since Pissimian only has 110 hit points, we're swinging for 240 thanks to weakness. And we draw a max potion, that's good. So even if, you know, our hand remains dead for a couple turns for some reason, we do have max potion to tank a couple hits here. If I'm not mistaken, I think Pissimian actually would have to, like, three-shot us if they if they somehow managed to get a couple more in play. So we're going to town map. Okay, so they got some supporters and a rainbow energy. That's interesting. Uh, over there in their prizes. So they're going to Rescue Stretcher. Okay, they're going to grab a Pissimian. So I'm not sure what else they had in there, but, but I'm guessing we're probably going to see a Sycamore here. Or maybe if, I mean, even if that's just all they have, I'd be happy with that. Okay, so they are going to Sycamore. Getting rid of a Puzzle of Time and a Lysander, okay? So do they have a Double Car with have a nest ball so they're getting there so right now they're doing I believe it's uh, 80 damage to us after resistance so they are gonna play acrobike do they get the energy that's the big question here okay so they're gonna ultra ball they must be really digging hard maybe we're gonna see a shaman or something ooh they got rid of escape rope that actually could have been kind of relevant Yeah, because if they 
had been able to get a knockout or played the escape rope and attached an energy, they could have knocked out. Ooh, yeah, I, I think that might have been a misplay on our opponent's part. I don't know what they have in hand, but I think they should have done that. Okay, so here, what do we do? I mean, we can max potion, but at the same time, I still don't think we're at risk of being knocked out. So even if our opponent promotes a Mew and, ha and gets all of their Passimians in play, what is that? It does 130 plus 160 with a choice band. So they would need all of their Passimians, choice band, DCE, and Kukui to knock us out. And off a two card hand, I'm honestly just thinking that's not very likely. So here I'm just debating. Yeah, I definitely want to attach this energy, and I think Lunala is the safer target for it. So that's the only reason I am opting to keep it on our Lunala. As opposed to the Lele, since our opponent can more easily knock that out. So it definitely is risky, because again, if they hit the choice band, like a rescue stretcher, DCE, Kakui, we're gonna be in some trouble here. But again, I just think that's a lot to ask for off of a two-card hand. Okay, so they are going to get Passimian. So, I mean, they're getting there, but... Okay, so they have the choice. Okay, they're putting Choice Ban on the Passimian. And just a puzzle of time. Okay, so we are actually going to be safe, it looks like. Okay, so we have some options here. We have... Um... So here I'm going to grab a Lele, and I really don't want to get end to a low hand size at this point. Um, just because these cards are kind of useless, and I don't want to be end into more trash if we take a knockout here. So here I think I'm just going to grab a Sycamore, and we can actually play down a good bit of these cards. We still have Rare Candy left in the deck uh, if we do need to set up another Lunala of some sort if need be. So I'm okay with actually discarding these Rare Candies. So we're going to throw down a Choice Band. Again, it doesn't matter too much in this matchup. But here, I think we're, what we're going to do is we're going to Psychic Transfer, and we're going to heal off this Lunala first, since it is proving to be the better attacker in this particular matchup. So we're going to move all those energies to the bench, and here we are going to uh, Max Potion, heal off that 80 damage. And here, what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to Ultra Ball, let's get rid of a couple things, and we can actually grab another Cosmog uh, to potentially set up the the other Lunala or a second Lunala GX uh, if we do get worried about um, you know our active one going down. But here we're going to Sycamore, getting rid of that rare candy. And okay, so hmm, trying to think. So we're going to Psychic Transfer. We're going to move this energy back onto our Lunala GX because we definitely want to keep attacking with it since it is the beefier, tankier Pokemon. And I think we can just leave those other two energies on our Tapu Lele since it is at full health. But here, uh, again, we're going to take a knockout this turn. And if our opponent somehow gets an end off that puzzle of time they played, uh, I don't want to be end into a bunch of useless cards. So here, let's check what supports. We have a Lysander in the deck still. Um, so I might actually grab Tapu Lele. Since, you know, we could grab the other Lunala, but the chances of us top decking the one rare candy left is a little bit slim, so I prefer just to grab Tapu Lele to potentially draw us a new hand or a Lysander if we need to. But here we're going to take a knockout, grabbing a Psychic Energy, that seems okay to me. And our opponent needs to make something happen this turn. I think they really can't afford to not take a knockout this turn. Okay, and they did get a Sycamore off of their Puzzle of Time, where they rearranged the top three cards of their deck. So what do they have, though? And here, our opponent just concedes, so I guess they didn't really have too much else to work with at this point. So our Lunala Tapu Lele GX deck is going to take the game in this instance. So yeah, Lunala definitely has gotten some cool new tricks now that Guardians Rising has come out. Gar Garbler has kind of slowed down the format a little bit. You know, we have... Uh, the Altar of the Moon to give us free retreat. Uh, Tapu Lele is a nice consistency booster and back attacker. Uh, we have Field Blower to shut off the Garbotox and Garbiter. So definitely a very fun deck. And maybe it'll have some potential in the future. We'll see. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our online store at rarecandytcg.com. If you can pick up something to help support the channel, it'd mean a lot to us. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.